everyone. This is Bob Berg back with another episode of Go Giver Influencers. And we have a great guest with us today. Can't wait to meet him. Uh, let's, you know, we're, the, the episode today is titled Influential Culture. And this person is uh, a great person to speak on that. First, let's talk about culture for a moment. And we've, we've talked about this on, this on this show before, that it's been said that, cul that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Uh, this is often attributed to the management icon, Peter Drucker, although there's other people who are credited with having said it, uh, Mark Fields of, of Ford and, and some others. It doesn't matter, it is true. At least I believe it is, but who am I? Uh, uh, Peter Drucker believes it's true, and, and that means a lot more to me than me thinking it's true. But here's the thing. When they say culture eats strategy for breakfast, that's not to say that strategy isn't important. Strategy is very important. It's just that it needs to fall within the foundation of a powerful and positive culture. Right. Otherwise, the best strategy in the world, if within a negative culture, it's just going to rain destruction. It's sort of like a salesperson who is very, very talented, um, but who does not have high character. Well, they're going to sell the wrong things to the wrong people. It's, it's going to be everything destructive that can possibly be in terms of sales instead of it being a benevolent win-win for everyone involved. Well, if a company has a culture that's based on mm, positivity and inclusivity and, and encouragement, well, that's going to be what you'll see within the organization and it's gonna to lead to very happy end users, customers. If a culture is based on competition and gossip and, and uh, scarcity and, and so, well, that's, you're gonna see that within the culture itself and it's gonna make for a very negative experience. Now, how would you like to work at a place and be a leader within a place that's known as the happiest place on earth? There's probably a good culture at work there. And our guest today has been a leader, was a leader at that company for a very, very long time. His name is Dan Cockrell. And Dan is the founder of Dan Cockrell LLC, a uh, speaking and consulting firm specializing in helping leaders create vibrant cultures and maximizing employee engagement, this to fuel their organization's success. Well, again, he's certainly a man who knows from whence he speaks, having worked in leadership positions for the Walt Disney Company for much of the 27 years he was with them. He also had a magnificent, and still has, a magnificent mentor in his dad, Lee Cockrell, a Disney leadership icon, and we'll talk about him later, and uh, who also was my featured guest on the Go-Giver podcast, episode 27. Dan started at Walt Disney World in 1991 as a parking attendant and finished his career at Disney as vice president of the Magic Kingdom, leading 12,000 cast members. He had the opportunity to open Disneyland uh, Paris and lived in France for five years before moving back to the States with his lovely wife and family. His main website is dancockerel.com. We'll include that link in the discussion se uh, section, as well as other links. Shannon Faraby is filling in, doing that again today for Kathy Tajanel. And so thank you, Shannon, for doing that. And uh, hey, Dan, welcome. Thanks very much for having me, Bob. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Now, I would say that culture in the business sense can probably be defined as the behavior and characteristics of a particular organization. Am I right, wrong? How far off am I? How do you define it? No, you're, you're right on. And I think your introduction about how culture eats strategy for breakfast is absolutely right. Um, strategy is a great way to plan but strategy sort of has the connotation that you can control everything and culture is simply something you can influence. And uh, by influencing it, you can make great things happen by sort of releasing people's potential. So I think you're right on in that, that aspect. Okay. I want to, um, as we begin, say again, say hi to some of the people. I, I hope everybody, by the way, is impressed that I'm actually looking now at a whole bunch of comments at the same time. I'm just figuring, Dan, just for you to know, my technological skills are, are not where they maybe should be. And so people are used to me kind of messing everything up here to just kind of put it bluntly. So let, let me just take a, a look. Um, 
Uh, oh, Cloris Kylie, who was a, 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 a guest before, she's on. My great friend, uh, Alini uh, Jit Hansen, she's on. Phoebe Dale, the Feetsterama, Ari Greenwald, Tolom brother, Jeff West, my brother out in, in Texas, who was also a guest, uh, amazing author and, and leader himself. Um, in a huge organization such as Disney, and we always say, you know, leadership, a culture of leadership begins at the top and trickles down, but we can lead from anywhere. How do the cast members, Dan, how do they lead from where they are? I know you encourage that. Sure. Well, I think to your point, uh, leadership, when, you, when you're building a culture, and, and Disney has a long history of culture. You know, Walt Disney originally really understood that he wanted to create this incredible environment for people to create great memories in and be in a place where families could spend time together. And the, the company hasn't lost that since Disneyland opened in 1955. But over time, I've learned that uh, when you get to a senior executive level in any company, in my opinion, half your job is uh, being uh, proactive and engaging and uh, helping plan the future. And half your job is trying to just to stay out of the way. I think as you come up through a company, you get used to being involved in everything. And if you really want to build a culture where people take initiative and are empowered, you have to learn to step aside and let them be who they are and let them go down paths and sometimes make mistakes. And that's probably where we, we trip up the most as executives because we think we need to be involved in everything and we sort of overvalue ourselves. And a lot of times when you have the right culture, the best thing you can do is do nothing. And uh, that's the hardest thing to do, I think, for people who are very driven. So... You know, I know that with, with Disney, that you all work so diligently on the culture, and your dad, Lee, who, who he put together the original Disney leadership program, as I recall, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. So, so this was always a focus, and you, you did empower people. But what about the question, I'm, I'm often asked this, and it's from people who are employees, let's say, where it's a negative culture. And they really don't know what to do. Uh, they want to stay with that company. There, there are some good aspects of the company, but the culture maybe is toxic, or if it's not that, it's just not as positive as it could be. Where do they begin to make a difference if they can? Sure. Well, I think that it's probably the same expression we use for recycling is uh, think globally and act locally. And at the end of the day, uh, one person in a huge organization is never going to change the culture by themselves. And so what I found myself doing a lot was uh, making sure um, I was filtering out the parts of the Disney culture that maybe weren't the best for my cast members, and I was trying to grow everything else. So as I tell people, influence the people that are within your span of control, and everything else is going to be uh, is going to be what it is. And and it, you have to decide whether, on balance, the company you're working for has a culture that you can accept. And there's good days and bad days. And I've had many days at Disney where I drove home thinking. I do not like working here, but I had more good days where I drove home thinking I did some great things today and I was able to great, create some great experiences. And on balance, if you have more better days and bad days, stay with the company. But there are going to be times when you, you feel like, okay, it is so maybe the opposite of what your values are and your expectations are that you have to make a change and change your own environment. And that's mm -hmm. an individual decision. Uh, but you're not always going to be able to save the world. And you have to decide when it's time to um, quit strategically, I'd call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and that's a great point. Now, I want to ask you about yourself uh, and, and the premise for you becoming a, a great leader and, and so big in terms of culture. First, a, a comment from Dom, Dom uh, Cassone, who writes, I love to hear about Disney ever since Dan Kennedy made me aware of what they do and how they do it. And it's really funny because, I, Dom, I was at a, a Dan Kennedy event where, Don, uh, where Dan talked about Mike Vance, who was a friend of his, who, who was one of the uh, people, I think, originally at Disneyland. And um, uh, uh, Dan, this is probably before you were born, I would imagine, <laughs> and, and, and who was such a great, um, uh, a great leader uh, in, in that regard. So yeah, Dan, who, and I don't know if you know Dan Kennedy, Dan, uh, <laughs> that he is a, a great marketing expert. I mean, really one of the, the, the prime marketing people anywhere and he is a huge huge fan of of disney and uh and it's so funny because when people talk about marketing disney is just always brought up uh, you know the, 
you provide that kind of customer experience, which we know begins with the experience with your team members, with your cast members. And so, so, oh, go ahead. No, I, I think you're right. I think when you think about why Disney is uh, great at marketing, I think there's extreme clarity in what we do. Um, you know, our, our tagline is we make dreams come true. So there's some pretty big, big promises of what we, we tell people we're going to do. And we don't back away from that. And so the expectations are high and the, there's a lot of pressure to perform and make sure we deliver on that. But uh, we, you know, the, once again, the culture has built a place where every cast member understands their purpose. Everyone's role is different. Some people uh, make French fries. Some people sweep the ground. Some people are vice presidents. Some people are uh, servers in restaurants. Everyone, we have like so many different roles, but everyone's purpose is the same. And everyone understands if we're doing our job correctly, that we're all there to make sure that every single guest has the best vacation they ever had. And it's up to our cast to deliver that. And so once you set that purpose, it's easy to sort of brush aside rules and guidelines and all the other stuff that gets in the way of making decisions uh, to empower the cast to make those decisions. And uh, so I think clarity is a pretty important thing. Uh, Jeff West uh, writes, great comment. If the culture is great, sometimes the best strategy is to do nothing. <laughs> I love that. Um, you grew up with a couple of wonderful parents. Uh, I would imagine that your understanding of culture came first right within your family, right? And, and, I, and you're a culture expert. You go into company, you speak to people, you coach people on culture. Uh, same principles basically apply only on a, a more micro level? Absolutely. I, uh, you know, my parents, when I grew, grew up, uh, I was raised to, I think, I think, learn the right values, uh, respect people. Uh, my, uh, my grandparents, uh, I had a great relationship with and I spent a lot of time with. And my grandfather uh, finished the, uh, graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy and was in World War II. And I got to know him very well. And he had very high standards. So I think when you get, you know, you get exposed to great examples and role models, uh, it's much easier to adopt those and adopt them into your behaviors and your life as you get older and uh, mature. You were also a great athlete in your, your younger days. Not that you're old, especially compared to me, but, but in your younger days, a great athlete. How did uh, culture fit into, um, into your roles with your teams? Yeah, I, th I think when I was in high school, I played football, and I realized that uh, encouraging everybody and getting involved, and once again, I think that idea of role modeling is extremely important. You have to work as hard or harder than everybody else, and – uh, at the end of the practice, pick up the balls and put them in the bag and do all the things that aren't associated with uh, sort of that idea of you know, being, uh, being, having a certain position. I think you need to role model that. And then in college, probably one of the best things I ever uh, went out and discovered was rugby. And uh, on a rugby field, there's, uh, you play uh, two 45-minute halves, two 40-minute halves with a very short halftime, and you have 30 players on the field. So it's very hard for any one player to be sort of a star. It really it comes down to team effort. And I think that's why you see a lot of the uh, South, Southern Hemisphere, New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, and a lot of the European teams are great at rugby because they get that sense of uh, teamwork. And uh, that, that taught me a lot about culture, that once the game starts, even if you're the captain, uh, you don't have much control anymore. You just have to play along with your teammates and encourage them. But uh, there's, there's only so much you can do. It's all in the preparation. Okay, we're speaking with Dan Cockrell, and uh, feel free to ask your questions for Dan. We've got him for another 15 minutes or so, but I want to let you know again, his website is dancockerell.com. That's D-A-N-C-O-C-K-E-R-E-L-L.com. Uh, Shannon has, has put this in the comments a couple of times, so it's there. You can also connect with him. Uh, he has a free ebook, 12 Tips to Being Happy and Successful in Life, and that's dancockerell.com slash ebook and i know shannon's going to post that in there too you can find him on twitter at dancockerell.com on facebook uh instagram and uh, again those those links will uh those links will be in there cloris kylie wrote in terms of creating a strong vision mission and culture what has worked for an organization like disney will work for small businesses too and i i, you know, I certainly agree with it that because i mean I, I think principles are principles they're just uh you know, it's like a recipe. You, you bake some brownies for five, and it's really the same ingredients if it's for 50 or 500, just a different quantity, right? I, yeah, absolutely. The great thing about culture, well, the great thing and the hard thing about culture is 
it doesn't cost any money. And I think people get caught up in that. Well, they say, well, if I was a bigger company, I had the money like Disney, I could have the same culture as Disney. That's what makes it so interesting is you can't buy culture. You have to hire people who are, are humble, who are driven, who are smart, uh, who are flexible, uh, who have great self-awareness. I mean, there's all the leadership traits involved. And once you can put a, a, a group together like that, you can be running a bakery, a restaurant, or a theme park, and the same, to your point, the same uh, the pr principles apply to the interactions you have. And a culture can be an office, it can be a kitchen in your own house, or it can be a theme park with 12,000 people. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no definition to uh, how big a culture is. It's just about the, the people in that, in that group that interact with each other. That's what a culture is means now part of success of course is uh are the failures <laughs> and uh, you know I, I have no doubt that you had many only because you're so successful and very few people as successful as you didn't have some some uh, doozies along the way uh share any of those with us absolutely i i think when i when when it comes down to the big failures i've had and the smaller failures i've had because i i couldn't think of one big moment where i just failed I think it, um, when you're at that level, you have to hi hold yourself highly accountable. And um, I, I think uh, I learned probably too late in my career, there's a great African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. And I think the times when I failed in my, my career at Disney, I wanted to go fast. I wanted to make things happen quickly because I was impatient and I wasn't thinking things through. And I didn't necessarily want to have the hassle of collaborating and have to explain what I want to do to everybody. And so I just went and that never worked. Uh, even if I got uh, down the road a little bit, um, unless you bring people with you, uh, you can't make really change happen. And so you have to kind of leave your ego at the door and realize that in a great culture, often you're not independent, you're interdependent. And you need a lot of people to help you to succeed. And uh, that's just that a lot of times that's counterintuitive because you're, you know, I think a lot of the, when you look at the United States, at least a lot of the sports, a lot of our culture is about individual achievement. And that's not how you get sustainable success. It has to be between cooperative behavior among a group of people. And you may be at times when you're leading and there's many times when you're following and you have to just know when the, the right time to take that role is. Okay, a couple questions for you, Dan, if we may. Uh, one from Charlene, and then there's also one I just saw from, uh, from Keith. Uh, Charlene asks, what was Dan's main purpose when he decided to write his ebook for us? So what was your main purpose when you decided to write the ebook? I love the title of it. Thank you. Well, you know, it's funny. That's, uh, that's a document I wrote about, gosh, maybe 12 or 14 years ago. I was invited. I'm on the uh, board of Junior Achievement of Central Florida. And we are an organization, a nonprofit that helps students learn about the free enterprise system and success skills. So we teach them how to interview for jobs and how to dress for jobs and how an economy works and how to get a loan. And so I was invited to go speak in Cordoba, Argentina. And there was a bank down there that was sponsoring a South American conference. And so when I went down, I wanted to give these students some advice. And so I put that list together and I was just thinking about the things that I wanted to share with the students. Um, and there's not a lot of detail in there. I didn't try to explain everything. I just put kind of uh, bullet points and I'll, I'll have people figure it out themselves. Um, but my, my purpose is really to share um, what I uh, know about people and, and, what I, and what I know for me has helped me be successful. Those are all things that came from directly from my experiences and I share those with others. And then hopefully if people decide to get the ebook, I'll be able to continue to talk to them. Uh, I do a, an article of the week and if they have questions and just be able to engage with people over time and, uh, and help them along with their, either their businesses or their careers or their success in their jobs. Okay. And if they just go on your website, can they subscribe to your, uh, e your, e okay, good. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so question from Heath, and Heath, I'm not sure I understand this or, or, or not. Uh, he wrote, what's your best takeaway, Dan, for creating a strong customer-to-customer -customer culture? And Heath, did you mean because, let's say at Disney, the customers seem to, uh, because everybody's so happy, they kind of work well with each other? Uh, or I, I'm not exactly sure. So, uh, Dan, do you kind of get that, or would you like him to maybe rephrase it? We, we do that uh, quite a bunch. 
where we yeah, I mean, understand the question. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I think um, that I'll take a, I'll take a swipe at it. I think uh, when you create an environment where customers are inter interacting and, and there's a sense of community, I think what we've we, we figured out at Disney, and I, I don't know if we figured it out or we just created this, but we, we train our cast members to really engage our guests on a personal level and create an emotional connection. And I think the shared excitement and the shared uh, value of the Disney experience, mm. a lot of our customers interact with each other, a lot of our guests. And so um, we've, we encourage that. And we've had some great stories and you see people, you know, helping each other out. And uh, I think it's, it kind of rubs off, you know, when you can create a nice positive environment, people tend to be more that like that. You know, I, I agree with you. When I was actually in Orlando, Kathy Tejanel, my awesome business partner, and I were doing an event um, uh, up there this weekend. And so there were some, some uh, obviously, you knew who the Disney people were because they had little kids with them who were smiling. And, and the adults were smiling too. And, you know, I, I think the, the, the culture of joy that you've all created just gives people positive expectation. Now, Keith uh, wrote back, when I think of a business culture, there is staff to staff. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the things Disney does, it's so great. And you, you, we also associate this with Southwest and with other certain other companies that because they create a great experience for their first customers, which are their team members, what we would call cast members, they have a much more positive attitude with one another because of that. Absolutely. There's uh, something we talk about at Disney called the value chain and it, it ends with making money, but it doesn't, that's certainly an outcome. And I think a lot of companies try to focus on making money, but that's just an outcome of a lot of other things. And if you go to the beginning of the chain, it really starts with leadership. So the idea of culture we've been talking about, you create a great environment for your employees to work in. If they feel valued and respected and excited to come into work every day, they're more likely to create a great experience for the customers and be more open and more confident. And if your customers get a better experience, they rate your experience higher. If they rate the experience higher, they're more inclined to come back or come to you again to buy something, and that's where you make your money. And so it really does start with environment. And I think a lot of companies try to shortcut that, and it's because it's a long-term investment, and you have to have faith because creating a culture doesn't directly make money. It creates a, an engine that, that ramps that up, that creates this place where people are more drawn to, they get emotional mm -hmm. connections, uh, and they tend to come more often, and that's where the, you know when they come back and back again, you make you make more money. So it's uh it's definitely a, a chain, but it it starts way up with an attitude at the very beginning. Okay, excellent, uh, Dean. Thank you for your comment, uh, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Rowe. Great to hear candid perspectives from both of you. Great down to earth interview. Thank you, um, uh, Al uh, Dalla, my great brother from Canada. He wrote uh, great wisdom, culture of joy. Love it. Thank you, Al. Um, you worked at uh, Disneyland Paris for five years. Um, you must have taken some great experiences from that. That changed my life. I'll tell you, going from work. Yeah, well, well, going from parking cars at Epcot is my first full-time job at Disney. And as I, I love telling people, I did domestic parking and I wanted to expand my portfolio. So I did international parking. Ah. So I parked cars domestically and internationally and they're not the same. How many people um, but, uh, say that? <laughs> but I'll tell you that what I've learned, I think that the big learning for me, and my wife is from France, and so we, oh. we have great conversations about culture, and she's lived in the United States for over 20 years, and we lived together in France for five years, and so we really get to see things from a, a different perspective. And um, what I realized is people are people, and I think mm -hmm. that's why Disney's been so powerful, because it taps into basic human needs, uh, community, togetherness. Uh, watching children, you know, be amazed and be happy and create these memories together. Now, how you do that is very different in each culture and how you take care of your employees is different and how you recognize your employees is different. And uh, one of the stories I share that I, a great, I had a learning every single day I lived in France for five years, I learned something new because when you don't live in a culture and you don't grow up there, every day is a new experience. And, um, Reward and recognition is a big piece of what we do at Disney. We reward and recognize performance. We want to make sure we reinforce when people do great things. And it's such an important thing to do in any culture. And what I learned generally in France was do not recognize people publicly. It's embarrassing. They feel like they're kind of putting everyone else down. People, you sort of alienate them. So one-on-one -on -one is, you know, generally fine. 
but you usually don't want to do that uh, in a public uh, forum. And then the other piece of it was when you come to the United States, stereotypically, once again, this is not 100%, but stereotypically, uh, the average American will say, if you're going to recognize me, I want a podium and balloons and I want my family there and I want to make a speech. And, you know, we, we like to be recognized publicly. And so I think what I learned, uh, you know, at working internationally was a lot of the human um, traits and instincts about how you enjoy things and people are the same, but you, you come at it a little bit different. And that's where the learning and growth happens by uh, challenging you to live in another country. You know, it's interesting that you say this because in the States where it's you know, supposedly a more individualistic culture, we want to be recognized publicly or collectively, whereas in France, where it's a much more collective culture, they want to be recognized individually. Right. Yeah. How, how interesting. I wish I knew how to say how interesting in France. I only know how to say uh, croissant, uh, and that's about it. <laughs> um, let's see. Mark Hansen wrote terrific insights. Thank you, Mark. Oh, he's a great guy. I've known Mark for probably almost 30 years. Uh, uh, Lini wrote, are you okay, Bob Berg? Great interview. Yeah, I think I'm okay. Um, uh, uh, hopefully you meant to write, you are okay. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. And I love Shannon Faraby, uh, lo loved your comment. Creating a culture doesn't directly create money. It's a chain that starts way up with an attitude. And of course the money is the result. Um, okay. I want to ask you one more question, uh, Dan, and I, I think this is important because I think you've probably seen both sides of this. There are some people and some cultures in which there's a lot of sharing of information, sharing of time, sharing of advice, and then there are other ones where that's not the case. What seems to be the cause and how do we, how do we change it for the better? Yeah, that's a great one. Um, I'll tell you something I've discovered since going into my sole proprietorship from a big corporation is how um, generous people have been with their time and their counsel and their advice. And, you know, people like yourself help get on a podcast and telling people what I'm doing. I've just been blown away by how open people have been. And so um, I think if you want to talk about it, and that once again, it all comes back to culture. And if that's rewarded in companies, then in cultures, then people will do it more. And I think a lot of companies, there's a forced rank system. You have to be better on the curve than everybody else or then you're, you know, you, you, you're a lower rating. And I think one of the things at Disney, and, and it's really, I, I'll talk about it, it's a dilemma. Um, I, I, there's another whole thing I like to focus in on is problems and dilemmas. Problems have solutions. Two plus two is four. That's a problem. It can be solved. Most of the things we deal with in life are not problems. They're dilemmas and they can only be managed. And I think what I've found at Disney is we, uh, we focus on not only the results we get, but how we get those results. And so you're held accountable to perform at a very high level, but you're all held accountable to help others. And uh, those are, you know, those, I, I, I guess you could say they're opposite. They're hard to do simultaneously. And that's what makes it uh, difficult to do. But that's where the success comes from. And so not only when you, you have a successful um, um, result, you need to do it as a team and bring people along the way and share and make and lift people up around you. And if you can create that culture, and once again, if that's not rewarded, people won't do that necessarily. It's nice to say people will do it out of their kindness of their heart, but when you're working every day and you're being rewarded for certain behaviors, that becomes the culture. And so I would just encourage people who want to create that kind of culture. When some, when you see someone help someone else, you make sure you make a big deal out of that and you reinforce that behavior and when people see it's rewarded, they'll be more likely to do that in the future. But you have to call it out very, uh, with a very uh, clear intent. Okay. Dan uh, Cockrell is the uh, founder of Dan Cockrell LLC, a speaking and consulting firm specializing in helping leaders create vibrant uh, cultures and maximize employee engagement. And just from listening to him for the past 30 minutes, we can understand how, why he was so good at that. And he's a former longtime executive leader at, at, at Disney. Um, his uh, his um, website, dancockerel.com, he also has a um, free ebook, 12 Tips to Becoming Happy and Successful in Life, dancockerel.com slash ebook. Again, Shannon has all that. Um, if you haven't yet received or, or purchased John David Mann's and my newest book, The Go-Giver Influencer, visit The Go-Giver Influencer, or excuse me, The Go-Giver 
www.kathytagenall.com where you can get it there. And Kathy Tagenall and I have our, our uh, next Go Giver Entrepreneurs Academy uh, coming up in July, right in Dan's backyard, actually. Again, that's where we hold them. And just you can go to uh, uh, Go Giver Entrepreneurs Academy.com. Again, Shannon will be. Uh, We'll be putting that in the, uh, I was going to say the show notes, the um, discussion thingy over there. There goes my, my um, technological uh, expertise. <laughs> hey, uh, Dan, I just want to thank you again for being with us. This was a, a just wonderful information. It was very enlightening. And I, you're over in Italy right now, by the way. I didn't even know that. You're, you're coming to us from Italy right now. Are you on vacation? Uh, uh, sort of. My wife and I, my parents, my parents, uh, Lee and Priscilla, are, are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, Aww. and we're celebrating our 25th, so it's a nice wow. celebration over here, so we're well, enjoying it. Wow, happy anniversary to both couples, what a wonderful way to, uh, to end it. Hey, we'll be back next week with another episode of Go Giver Influencers, and until then, I wish you a fantastic day and a great, great week. So long, everyone.